for lung cancer in the Philippines, what we experience so far is that we see most cases in the advanced stage. The problem is when they come in, they are already symptomatic. What we have made us a way of uh, probably reducing the number of cases of uh, late stage lung cancer is to do early lung cancer screening. So for individuals who have high risk, meaning these are smokers who are at least 50 years old, or we may have family history of having lung cancer, then we encourage them to undergo a form of imaging called low-dose CT scan, where we may be able to detect the cancer at an earlier stage and or offer a curative treatment, meaning we can still be able to cure the lung cancer. The primary challenge we encounter is information dissemination. So it's, uh, although the program has been running for uh, a, a number of years, we have few takers of the early lung cancer detection program. So it has to do with the information being brought out of our hospital to, let's say, the co local communities and also identifying which individuals would qualify for such program. So we are hoping that with um, programs such as this, uh, with uh, social media as well, we will be able to reach out to people and bring in more patients or more individuals who may have higher risk of developing lung cancer and do early cancer detection. Well, for, for screening, we do uh, low-dose CT scan. I think in other uh, localities, they may do chest x-ray, but chest x-ray is really not sensitive or specific for us to be able to detect lung cancer. So we fortunately now have a type of imaging modality where there's a higher chance of, of course, detecting lung cancer at an earlier stage. What I think the individual who goes through the screening process may have to understand is that there are pitfalls of doing screening. There are possibilities that we may have false positive or false negative. So it's important that the subject, the individual understands this risk and uh, accepts this risk before he consents to doing a low-dose CT scan. Uh, this is a very exciting uh, program that we have at uh, with National Cancer Center Hospital in Japan. So we have a, a, a two-year program that's currently uh, still ongoing. Um, what we do now is we identify patients with rare cancer. When we say rare, it, it occurs in probably less than six of the 100,000 population. So we... Uh, ask them to participate in the study, and all they have to do is uh, provide us with the tissue specimen, the biopsy specimen that they have, and probably a sample of the blood. And we send this out to Japan. What they do in Japan is they do molecular testing. They look at some genes that may be changed or mutated. The future of such a genomic profiling is that we may be able to find out a treatment that's more appropriate for the, the rare cancers. The problem we have with rare cancers is that there are really very few drugs that are being developed because, of course, pharmaceutical companies would look at the return of their investment. And so these are the cancers that are most of the time not really well studied. So we have this initiative by, I think, the government of Japan and uh, through the National Cancer Center Hospital where we do now this genomic profiling. So the ultimate objective, of course, is to develop uh, certain treatments that would ad address the needs of uh, patients who suffer from rare types of cancer.